Let's talk about the concept of tenants involving Azure and the Microsoft 365 services. So first things first, if you think about um, the idea of cloud services, you are a tenant of somebody else's uh, environment. In fact, I always thought there's, there's a funny t-shirt I've seen out there that it says, uh, there is no cloud, only somebody else's computer. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's very true, right? Like when we are hosting things in the cloud, uh, we are hosting our, our uh, you know, uh, virtual machines or, you know, our data or whatever it is. We're actually hosting it on somebody else's hardware, right? In these data centers. So we are a tenant of that environment. It's kind of like if you live in an apartment complex and that apartment complex has uh, maybe a, a pond and a little park that you can walk around or walk your dog or, you know, playground for the kids, maybe a swimming pool. Those are amenities that that apartment is uh, allowing its tenants to have access to, right? If you are a tenant at that apartment complex you get you get access to the amenities so this is the idea with the cloud services as you know as you are you are a tenant of these cloud services you are allowed to have access to certain amenities that are available to you of course with microsoft 365 there are certain things that are included with azure ad there are certain things that are included it all ties together so I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, hopefully, you you if you are wanting to do hands-on, you went through and you created a uh, a, a subscription in uh, my videos about setting up for hands-on, and so you uh, you know how to create a a uh, subscription to Microsoft 365 and Azure AD. Okay, again, you can't really have Microsoft 365 without having Azure AD. It's just part of the deal. Azure AD is actually free. There's a free version of it but you uh, you can activate different uh, licenses for it and the more licenses you have the, the more capabilities and features you have though I'm not going to get deep into that right now I do want to show you Microsoft's definition of what a tenant is so actually if you do a Google search or Bing search on uh, what a tenant is for Azure you'll come across this article here subscription license accounts tenants for Microsoft's cloud offerings and if we scroll down a little bit, Microsoft tells you that an Azure AD tenant is a specific instance of Azure AD containing accounts and groups, paid or trial subscriptions of Microsoft 365 or Dynamic 3, Dynamics 365 include a free Azure AD tenant as well. So again, when you sign up for those, you get Azure AD because it all, you know, the directory service is all tied back to Azure AD. The Azure AD tenant does not include other Azure services um, and is not the same as Azure trial or paid. Now, what are they talking about there? Well, if you want to start hosting virtual machines, you have to set up a subscription to do that. Now, not really getting into that right now. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. We do have an Azure AD tenant. In my case, if I click right here and I go to the menu button and I go to Azure Active Directory, I can see that my uh, name, exam lab practice, and my tenant ID, everybody gets a unique tenant ID, all right? And um, that is my tenant. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Back in the on-premise world with domains, the way we've had things for years is you could have multiple domains, and one of the reasons for having multiple domains is to uh, subdivide your uh, environment up by country. Some Sometimes we'd have multiple domains because uh, we had uh, maybe our company uh, was owned by another company or we owned another company or you know we're part of a, a bigger organization. Um, I worked for a company in the early 2000s that they were uh, they were a smaller company that was owned by a much bigger company and this bigger company owned like 10 different companies. So you can imagine, you know, a situation like that where you are part of a bigger organization, but you have multiple companies and they each need their own services to manage. Well, this is perfect for uh, Azure tenants because we could have different tenants for the different companies uh, uh, of our organization. So we can actually go right here to manage tenants. And you can see I only have one tenant right now. That's this exam lab practice one but I can click to create a tenant. 
And then from there I can choose, am I creating a, a tenant, Azure AD tenant for myself? Is this gonna be a B2C, which is a business to customer? If you click on learn more right here too, they'll break it down for you a little bit. Um, in fact, they talk about a little bit about the uh, Azure AD licenses. Azure, there is a free version of Azure AD. You can create users and groups and they tell you synchron, you know, do directory synchronization with on-premise and self-service password uh, mess, uh, management. And then there's premium, which uh, allows you to support hybrid users, access both on-premise cloud resources, has advanced administration, dynamic groups, self-service groups, uh, manage uh, Microsoft identity management, uh, cloud write back capabilities to the on-premise world, self-service password reset for your on-premise users. Then you got premium two, step up, you get some um, more advanced security features like the privileged identity management, conditional access. Um, so you get just-in-time administration. And I, know, I do realize that at this point you may not know what all that means, but just understand that these are you know more powerful features. And then of course, the business to customer pay-as-you-go feature, this is if you were a provider who is uh, you know providing a uh, access to uh, Azure AD to perhaps a customer of some sort, um, customer facing apps. Maybe you're a, a service provider for some kind of a web-based app and you, uh, you, know, you have customers that pay you for this web-based app that you've got and you need a, a version of Azure AD just for that customer. So this is something you could do as well, all right? Um, anyway, if I select this, I can click next and then I can give it a name, you know, whatever this, uh, you know, whatever this this other organization is, right? I, it could be called something like uh, ABC Corporation, which I'm just making something up there, right? And then if I wanna specify the domain name, let's say ABC Corp Corporation, uh, dot on microsoft.com then I could do that of course the name's already taken like it is here then obviously uh, you know I'll just I'm gonna put the word uh, the number 1000 after it there we go so it's obvious that name is not taken now of course it doesn't really matter once you register that name with Microsoft that's just to create the tenant and then you can actually create a custom domain name to go with that so if I really did own the name abccorporation.com or something I could associate that with it uh, later okay at that point I would click review and create and then I would click create I'm not gonna create this tenant right now I just wanted to show you how you could do it and um, at that point when you have multiple tenants um, you can actually switch as an admin. You'll be an admin of both. You can switch back and forth by clicking this little switch button. Okay, so that is the idea of creating uh, a tenant. And of course, here's the thing. If you do that, though, you're going to have separate subscriptions for your Microsoft 365 side of things. So you'll have to have separate subscriptions for all that. So really, the thing you want to remember here is creating multiple tenants isn't really... Um, a common scenario for most organizations. It is for some, especially if they they have multiple companies that they own. Um, but you know, for the most part, if you're you know, unless you're a service provider providing some kind of web-based application or something, but for the most part, this is not something that a lot of companies are going to do. They're not going to have lots and lots of different tenants. So, but it is important to at least understand the idea of a tenant and the fact that you can create multiple tenants. In, in use utilization with Azure AD and Microsoft 365. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.